a real inspiration happened to me when I met my uh, visually impaired friend uh, as she was uh, explaining her challenges that she faces daily. So I was uh, struck by this irony that, you know, I've been teaching robots for years on how to see things. Please welcome Intel's Director of Technology Advocacy and AI for Good, Hema Chandraj, and Artificial Intelligence Engineer and Developer, Jagadish Mahandrid. The system has a AI system that, that is housed in a backpack and the cameras are concealed in the vest and the fanny pack. You're talking about a thumbnail kind of size chip, right? It's a very tiny chip and that is enabling this AI functions to happen inside the device or in this case inside the camera. The kind of the small form factor, the low weight, the low power, low cost, all of these are coming together with the, the newest AI developments. And it's only limited uh, by whatever imagination and dreams that innovative developers like uh, Jagadish and team have been able to do with this project. It is exciting when Intel announces an AI-powered backpack that can help the visually impaired navigate and perceive the world around them. You can't send everything back into the cloud or into somewhere else to process. It has to happen immediately, right? And we are more and more, we are able to do AI at the edge. The major accomplishments here is that using Intel's products, we are able to do everything in real time, run all these complex models in real time, including uh, you know AI models and depth processing and provide information in real time, which is a huge and a very valuable task to do, especially for a visually impaired project. Now please welcome Hema and Jagadish. Taking artificial intelligence to the edge. Great, we're all here. Why don't we just start out with the introductions? Hema, you want to go first? Sure thing. My first name is Hema. That's easy to say, it, right? Hema. And then my last name is Chamraj. Hema Chamraj. My role is actually, I'm the Director of Technology Advocacy and AI for Good at Intel. And we are committed to creating, you know, world-changing technology that enriches the lives of every person on earth. So that's something that we take very seriously. And I have an awesome role of uh, working on projects that deliver real impact in people's lives. So that's my introduction. And I was going to hand it off to Jagadish. Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. My name is Jagdish Mahendran. I am an AI and perception engineer with a background in deep learning, computer vision, and robotics. I'm also a researcher at the Institute for AI, University of Georgia. Over the past few years, I've uh, developed uh, AI and perception systems for various kinds of robots. That includes inventory robots and uh, kitchen robots. I am uh, deeply honored that my project, AI-based uh, visual assistant system, won the grand prize at OpenCV Spatial AI Competition uh, 2020. This is the world's largest competition in this area. It is absolute pleasure to be part of this podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much for those wonderful introductions, and welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson, and with me in the studio from the San Francisco Lighthouse Adaptation Store, it's Rocky Gomez. Thanks for being here, Rocky. Hello. Thank you. Well, this is really something that we're both really interested in. When we first heard about it, I was really excited. Kind of like making a human into an autonomous car or making a human autonomous. But you even said that you've been waiting 10 years for this to come along, Rocky. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I It's something like that. I'm just fangirling a little bit over here, only in that it's such a wonderful thing to see that you're working on something like this, because I have long since envisioned the 21st century facelift, if you will, being given to travelers who are blind, who orient and travel in the public spaces. And I, I just think that with vehicles and all of these other things, even my vacuum cleaner can navigate autonomously. We can certainly improve the ways in which information is communicated to blind people. So when, when Jeff mentioned this, I was just, I, I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited. So it's really a pleasure to be here. <laughs> just anxious to, to learn more. Well, thanks for being here, Rocky. Hey, Ma, how did Jagadish's project, his initiative, come across to Intel? What is the connection of how you met Jagadish? 
Yeah, so in my role, right, I get to kind of meet innovators like Jagadish. But in this context, we've been part of this organization called Open CV. It's uh, something that Intel uh, actually the the beginnings of uh, what is now called Open CV started with an Intel. It was back in 1998. An Intel employee had this idea that computer vision is going to be a very innovative technology that should be open sourced, and so he had started working on it, put a development team together. But since 2008, it kind of moved out of Intel. and became something much much larger and and like jagadish was saying it's become one of the largest community that that comes together to develop innovative solutions around the tools and technologies from the open cv organization and so we are very much collaborating with projects that happen in open cv and last year as part of the 20th anniversary celebration intel partnered with open cv they announced the open cv special ai competition and they sponsored it and jagdish happens to be one of our winners from that competition so that's how i got to know jagdish is he's a one of our winners from this open cv special ai competition that was sponsored by intel and run by open cv Jagadish, when I was reading about what you accomplished through this winning this competition and the product, the initiative behind it is really interesting. Why don't you unpack it for our listeners a little bit? Tell us about your concept and where you see this going. Yeah, absolutely. To answer this question correctly, I should start a little bit with the background. So I'll start with how this idea occurred to me, and then how it led to me until here. So initially this idea occurred to me in 2013 when I started my masters that was 8 years ago so back then I couldn't make much progress due to various reasons one was I was new to the field and deep learning was not a mainstream in computer vision like how it is now but thanks to this uh, amazing improvements in the area of deep learning special thanks to intel uh, we were able to achieve a lot of uh, significant progress and able to do a lot of tasks that uh, we were not able to do just uh, like 8 years ago but the real inspiration happened to me when i met my uh, visually impaired friend as she was uh, explaining her challenges that she faces daily so i was uh, struck by this irony that you know i've been teaching robots for years on how to see things while there are people who cannot see things and having problems with navigating in the surroundings and they need help so this is what fueled my motivation to develop a visual assistant system and that's what led to me uh, uh, you know make this project and to give a uh, you know description about the project as such the system has a ai system that, that is housed in a backpack and the cameras are concealed in the vest and the fanny pack along with the batteries that can last for 8 hours and also the system is powered by a ogd camera kit that runs on intel movidia's vpu chip which is an ai chip along with the uh, intel's openvino uh, software and the system also comes with a voice interface through which the user gets critical updates the user can also engage with the system using a voice command via bluetooth enabled earphones the system then responds back to the users with uh, verbal information on how to safely navigate the neighborhood so this is the overall uh, you know uh, like a high level architecture of the project i'm curious about one one thing as i'm listening to you talking it's just it's so exciting to to see this it just I lose in my I'm getting speechless over here but um I'm curious is there also is there a means of communicating with the device quietly or silently is it is it exclusively done through voice interaction or is there also a means of say overriding that and navigating in an area maybe where a user isn't able to to speak to the device maybe in a place where there are a lot of people and you know you're trying to navigate through a maybe a crowded theater or a lecture hall or somewhere where you can't speak openly is there is there a means of directing the device autonomously or manually rather i should say yeah so so it works like this so uh, generally you know the system provides this voice updates right and these updates are classified based on the criticality so let's say there is an obstacle that is very close to the user and this updates overrides everything else so let's say uh, there was some other request that was asked by the user but when the user encounters a critical uh, situation this voice update takes over everything else and it would provide that critical update first to ensure the user is safe and then the user can request for other features like describing the environment or saving the location via gps or uh, accessing more other features so the idea is prioritize the safety of the user so no matter what the user is interacting with the system if there is a critical update this will be superseded 
compared to any other feature. And also a little bit more about the features. Like for example, let's say the user wants to know about the surroundings and wants to learn about the objects around the user. So the user can request the system uh, via voice command using certain keyword. For example, using the keyword describe, the system will begin to describe the surroundings and it will start to list the objects that are being seen. For example, if there is a car on the right side, 20 degrees, so this will be translated to the clock notation, which will be one o'clock in the clock notation. And let's say if there is a person on to the left side, let's say 40 degrees, this would be translated to 10 o'clock, right? And also as the user walks, this, this is another feature, as the user is walking closer to the stop sign, the system will update the user that it is going to activate crosswalk detection and it will start to perform crosswalk detection. But you know, these are the features that is done on user request, right? Mm -hmm. Crosswalk happens the moment the stop signs are, de are detected. But however, if there is a critical update, let's say there is a bike that is coming closer within a certain range, all these updates will be superseded by critical updates saying, you know, there is an obstacle within, let's say, three feet or two feet so that the user is safe enough. Mm -hmm. Is that obstacle, is that indicated by a voice or is that a tone or is it haptic? Is there, is there some means of telling the user without being communicated audibly, it's coming closer, it's coming closer or three feet, two feet, you know, is there a way of notifying the user? Yes, it is a voice that is played as an audio mm -hmm. through the uh, Bluetooth enabled earphones. I see. I really like that, that it prioritizes because I might be looking for a store or something like that, but it's very important that there's something moving in my path and all that. So that, that's really neat that it does have that feature. Yeah, so, so to give you a, a perspective, right? So the, the development of this project has involved, the main focus was to you know keep in mind that we asked the suggestions from the visual impaired people on how to use this product and how they want this product to be. And we conducted a lot of interviews and took their suggestion and uh, we continuously tried to integrate their suggestion as we developed the project. So which is why we wanted to have a very good user interface. Like one of the common issues with the existing solutions is that a lot of these apps provide a continuous bombardment of information. The user cannot concentrate after a certain while. And uh, this is something that we wanted to avoid and keep this information, uh, uh, you know, the, the rate of uh, information providing to the user to be limited and prioritize them based on the criticality. That's a really great point. Rocky and I were talking about uh, being bombarded by so much information, it almost paralyzes you. It stops you from moving forward because you have to take in so much information. So with that prioritization and the way you're working with this, and I'm glad you're getting input from people who are blind, visually impaired to discern what and how this operates. I was so glad to hear that too. I don't know if this is true, but Jagdish, you, you could uh, add on because you have, you're thinking of adding on a, a more things as you conduct this uh, testing, right? Like you are thinking of adding other features like uh, the haptic, like the maybe the wearable that could be in the future version of your project. Is that uh, accurate? I thought I captured yeah. something like that. Beyond, in addition to the audible interface, right? So you wanted to do more than maybe like a wearable bla bracelet or something. Yeah, that's right. You made a good point there. So I'll just talk about like, what are the next steps that we'll be doing? And then I'll get to the point that Hema just uh, pointed out. You know, uh, as a next step, uh, we have already formed a fantastic team called Mira. This contains people from various backgrounds who are volunteering to make a positive impact in the community. Our team also includes people who are uh, visually impaired uh, and they want to make a good impact in the visually impaired uh, people community. So we are in the process of raising funds for initial phase of prototype testing. And this would involve prototype tested by our own team members and then eventually start to test outside our team. This is a little bit of a, about our team. And one of our main goal is to make this solution open source and free so that anyone could contribute and make it self-sustainable. So we are actively you know, welcoming developers to contribute and integrate whatever features they may think will be useful for this project. And this is where what the point Ahima made makes a lot of sense. The idea is we want to make this project as open as possible and everyone should be able to contribute. Along those lines, we are, we are also thinking of changing or adding, not essentially changing as such, like, you know, adding more user interface to make as simple as possible. One of them might be, you know, adding those haptic feedbacks like a ring or something so that the user is provided with information through vibrations 
and even reduce their attention into their audio and pay more attention to the actual environment. This is something in our pipeline and there are a lot of exciting things and a lot of very interesting milestones that we have already laid out in the coming oh, years. Sounds like it. <laughs> and Rocky, you yeah, you were you said, you know, in the beginning that you're so excited to hear about this project and I heard Jagdish also say exciting and I should use the same word. Exciting is what comes to mind because these are really exciting times. Like Jagdish said, if 8 years ago the technology had not quite evolved uh, to the point where this could this is now a reality, right? That they have created something, a real system that works. So that is what is exciting for us is that the technology has evolved and that we are able to now kind of bring it down to a point where it is not a you know when you people think about ai right they think quickly about this huge humongous systems that needs to be in place but this is you're talking about a thumbnail kind of size chip right it's a very tiny chip and that is enabling this ai functions to happen inside the device or in this case inside the camera the kind of the small form factor the low weight the low power low cost all of these are coming together with the uh, the newest ai developments and and of course then there is the software that is paired with the hardware like the open vino toolkit that really makes this really come to life because what was not have a uh, possible a few years ago is now possible and it's only like limited uh, by you know whatever imagination and dreams that innovative developers like uh, jagadish can come up with right because that's what is exciting for me when i think about what jagadish and team have been able to do with this project yeah i think emma made an excellent point you know if you want to do this project just a few years ago it would have been a totally different problem because the solutions were quite different the hardware is were quite different you know these running this ai algorithms require a lot of computational power which uh, require this massive gpus which are heavy expensive and you know they need fans and power sources and you know imagine carrying all these things in a backpack to solve this problem this is practically uh, not feasible right but what we are achieving through, achieving through intel's solutions is that amazing all this technology has been compressed to a hardware form factor that is similar to a usb stick you can just plug this to a laptop which is carryable and also they provide this amazing model optimization software i'm talking about open you know intel open you know software here which can run even faster on their hardwares so this is just a fantastic achievement and a huge boost in the technology when it comes to ai Is that what led you to the I believe it's called the Movidius VPU from Intel is that the size factor the form factor and everything to implement that into your work That's right. Oh great. I I think this is really neat that you're doing as Rocky said doing work of this nature to actually help with we call it aut- autonomy or you know autonomous cars or something like that all the factors and everything that goes in there and all the processing the the speed of processing it's always been a concern of mine when someone's developing this if, if i call it like kind of like information pollution you said it was bombarding you don't want to have that and i'm glad you're looking at that and the importance of like maybe a, a curb or a sidewalk or a cutout that type of information it would be really neat to know that you could receive some input from your device in some form factor like you're looking into that a person who is visually impaired would flinch or unmistakably just take a left or just dodge something or move something to get that interface that haptic that sound that they would have that inclination to just respond without processing just almost instinctual or a knee jerk reaction to make a motion that would be really something yeah you just made a great point here jeff so the beauty of this project is that it's open source and we are welcoming people to contribute in any way it's possible and especially the problem that you're mentioning here it's 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 doable it's not really hard it's a matter of uh, you know coming up with a new hardware design so that you can plug them into one of the you know parts of the body and you can activate them using the uh, certain signals that is quite doable and uh, hopefully in the future we'll include all this uh, features in our uh, project and also if i can add one more thing to what jagdish said i think the, it's the real time aspect of what you said jeff is that the flinching of the you know that something that can vibrate or some kind of give a haptic feedback should happen so instantaneously right like uh, as they make a sudden uh, movement that could be dangerous and and that's also the beauty of doing this ai at the edge is so important because you know you can't send everything back into the cloud or into somewhere else to process it has to happen 
immediately right and and that is where we are in in this day and age of ai we are more and more we are able to do ai at the edge and so and jagdish did you have anything to add on the real time aspect of it yeah you know the problems with the one of the biggest challenge with the uh, ai algorithms are they are huge and they take a lot of time to process to process them in real time you need a lot of hardware right and which needs a lot of you know complex form factor cost and a lot of other overheads so with the uh, you know intel's movidius chip what we're doing is we are all compressing this to a small form factor and we can process all this complex data in real time uh, you know it's it's pretty much like the person is actually seeing it live which is a massive feature right imagine like uh, there is an obstacle and the system updates after you collide with the obstacle it's pretty dangerous right you don't want to have a system like that so one of the major accomplishments here is that using intel's products we are able to do everything in real time run all these complex models in real time including uh, you know ai models and depth processing and provide information in real time which is a huge and a very valuable task to do especially for a visually impaired project it's great for advanced detection its timing is so critical mhm and i imagine it'll be learning all along as well yes so so the idea is to include models and interesting problems like for example if you want to add a feature where you can detect grocery items this is doable once we collect a good amount of data we should be able to train a model and potentially include in our system and uh, integrate so that a visually impaired person can actually see what the vegetable or fruits or cross or any other grocery items that person is looking at hmm. wow amazing that's <laughs> great phenomenal How can how can people find out more about Intel and what you're doing with this initiative? I'll be able to provide a link to our group called Mira. This is the team that I was uh, talking about earlier and uh, mm-hmm. I guess I might be able to provide information yeah. from the Intel Yeah, we can provide information about this project specifically and you know and uh, all the details behind it the ones that uh, Jagdish talked about whether it is the, the Intel hardware software and, uh, and and broadly our collaboration right with the organizations like OpenCV so these are things that we can um, share with you and, and Jagdish has a lot of plans for what this can become because it's an open source it's being put out in the open source community so that developers who have ideas can kind of contribute to this project and we are very excited on what this could be and so Jagdish can provide some details and we'll do the same on the intel side. We want to just thank you for planting the seeds to get this initiative started and the great work that you're doing it because just to know that someone is working on something like this got Rocky and I excited and we were just so eager to get on to this interview and learn more about it and we'll put all those links in the show notes so if anyone who wants to follow up and see what's happening with the project or probably get involved by paying attention to it and giving them feedback of some sort that'd be really great. Thank you yeah. Jagdish and thank you Hema. It was a pleasure just talking to you Jeff and to Rocky. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, thanks for giving us your time. This is fantastic work you're doing. Such a great time having Hema and Jagdish in the studio here to talk about this great innovation that they're working on. So stay tuned, we'll bring you more as soon as we hear about it. And for more podcasts with the blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at @blindabilities, and drop us a line, give us some feedback at 612-367-6093. We'd love to hear from you. And a big shout out to Chichao for his beautiful music. You can follow Chichao on Twitter at L Chichao, Chichao, Chichao. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities to you, your family and friends, stay well, stay informed. and stay strong. We want to thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed. And until next time. Bye-bye. When we share what we see through each other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then, we can then begin, begin to bridge the gap between, between the limited expectations and the reality, and the reality of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. Of blind abilities.